Hey guys, welcome to this uh, radio video. And so uh, this is the first video of an actual decoding of a signal. And we're going to start with the basics. This is decoding CW, or what's called Morse code. Um, first of all, it's not a digital mode. So anyone that uh, wonders, Morse code is analog signals. And it is sent usually by humans and it is not really a digital mode but I will show you how to decode it because most software that I've seen have CW in the um, software so first things first you have to find yourself a Morse code signal now one of the problems with Morse code signals is that most of the Morse code you'll encounter are on the amateur radio bands and the problem with amateur radio Morse code is that it is sent by humans. So it means that basically it is not sent perfectly. You know a computer likes things that are really really stable and always pretty much the same. The problem with um, Morse code sent by a human is that you know we vary in speed we're not always precise and a computer might have problems with that. And that's the biggest challenge of decoding Morse code on a software like FLDG. So first of all, you'll have to, uh, of course, get your FLDG up and running, hook it up to your computer and radio, and uh, put your radio in single sideband mode if you don't have um, CW most advanced receivers have CW mode which is the best mode for that but if you have a portable receiver um, it probably doesn't have CW it has SSB or single sideband and um, if you have upper or lower sideband usually we um, you know use upper sideband when we want to decode and use these um, CW signals so Morse code is mostly on amateur radio bands, but of course there's a lot of Morse code that's also scattered through the bands. So when you hear Morse code signals, uh, like I am decoding one now, it's W1AW. This one is good for one major reason, is that W1AW is sent by a computer. So the text that is sent is sent by a computer, meaning that it's perfectly timed so when the signal's pretty good, it decodes well. As you see here, this is part of the text that it's decoding right now from W1AW. So what you do on the upper left, you go into op mode and you make sure that you select CW. One thing about CW is the information that you have at the bottom left. It's gonna tell you CWRX and there's a number also to the right. Now, CWRX means that it is receiving the um, Morse code, actually, at this time, at 17 words per minute. The arrows on the right are manual speeds. So if you know, for example, that a transmission is at 25 words per minute, you can actually play with this and go into the setting at 25 words per minute. Now, one of the thing that you need to know is that you have to be as precise as possible when you get into that uh, word per minute. Um, also, if you want to lock your reception speed, there's like a little arrow here. If you click, not a, an, an asterisk, sorry. When you click the asterisk, that freezes reception of the Morse code into that speed that you chose. So uh, if you see a little asterisk on the left side here next to the RX, that means that it is locked to 17 words per minute. If you don't have an asterisk, then the computer actually will determine the speed by itself. It's going to listen to the dots and the dashes and it's going to automatically set its speed. Now for computerized sent Morse code like W1AW, it is fine to use the automatic, automatic speed as the computer will adjust itself simply um, you know by listening to the dots and the dashes. But for human sent Morse code that is much more of a problem because 
since the speed varies all the time what happens is that sometimes the detection of the speed of reception isn't good so you might want to actually uh, tweak the speed manually and maybe lock it down when you have good reception now I'm gonna tune a band here and we're gonna check for Morse code signals when you decode or you receive a CW signal like now you'll see it appear on the waterfall and as you see here there's a yellow line going down here which means that this was a Morse code signal and here we go so here there's many signals um, so you can actually just center that little box you see when I move my arrow it moves in the waterfall so what you want to do is center the arrow directly on the Morse code signal to have reception so here's N4 MIT there's a lot of uh, stations here so it's kind of difficult to uh, decode it well Now a lot of the information sent through Morse code on amateur stations are, um, you know, traffic. Just sending out the call letters and uh, that's pretty much it. So here's mostly contacts probably. There's just so many stations. So we're going to tune around, try to find something else. Or I can go back to check for a signal from W1AW. -W. Here we have a signal just centered. Here, take care and seasons probably greetings as you see here two things will amper reception of uh, CW signals first of all the noise level so of course if you want to have success in decoding stations uh, get the best and the strongest CW or Morse code signals you can hear uh, the other thing is um, variations and propagation when you listen to shortwave stations you notice that the stations fade in and out it's gonna happen it's pretty much the same thing to your Morse code signals so it means that when you want to actually decode Morse code uh, be warned that some signals will actually have fading on it every signal that you hear makes a trace on the waterfall so it's very important that when you want to decode something you'll have to of course adjust either the waterfall or tune the radio slowly that will change its position in the waterfall K5LN is a call so here is a station that is K5LN. K means it's waiting for a call. So here this station VVV means calling all stations. And there's of course a knowledge of the Q code. So here it says QRL. So depending on what he wants to do 
you have the international Q code, which are preset uh, phrases to make contacts easier. And especially for Mars code is very good because there's a lot of uh, preset phrases that are, you know, abbreviated into just this three letter Q code. But there's also the fact that if you don't speak English uh, through the Q code, you can also have a contact even with a non-English speaker. So as you see here, it's not always easy. It's not always um, easy to understand. But one thing that's for sure is that the best thing that you can probably do to uh, practice your Morse code decoding on a um, you know, computer with FLDG is to use the W1AW signal. W1AW transmits pretty much all evening throughout North America um, on um, every amateur radio band and it actually sends uh, text and these transmissions are actually made for um, people that want to learn Morse code so they send at different speeds throughout the evening and usually they often send propagation reports and also articles in the uh, QST magazine for amateur radio so um, you can check for ARRL W1AW um, schedule on Google and you'll get of course the full schedule of the transmissions on um, you know different amateur radio bands. Here in the evening I uh, usually receive them quite well on uh, somewhere around 30, 3581 and uh, 7047. Um, so these are two frequencies that are quite strong throughout the uh, evening here in Montreal. So that's pretty much how you do it. Um, like I told you, you know, except for W1AW which you see at the beginning here that has cool and clear text that's easy to decode. Uh, the rest is, you know, hit and miss, uh, depending on the speed of transmission. There's also the, uh, you know, understanding the contacts. So, for example, on amateur radio, uh, very often the stations will send their call letters. So that's why I, my, uh, my eye came across K5LN here, which means the station is K5LN. It's an amateur radio station. Um, you can also go through the bands. There are CW signals scattered uh, a lot through the bands. And uh, why not try to decode them and try to find out what they're saying. Um, I think this is a fun project, a fun little thing to do with, with your computer. And uh, you'll stumble across some amateur radio stations that also um, you know, have conversations. Not everyone is just making contacts. Some people actually have big, long conversations through Morse code on the amateur bands. So that's always fun to have, you know, and especially when you hear about stations. You often have to readjust in the waterfall because both stations are not always tuned exactly precisely on the same frequency. There could be a few hundred hertz difference, so which means that you'll, you know, go center the Morse code signal when you need to do it and um, use, you know, that waterfall all the time so for CW um, it's not like digital modes digital modes require usually that stations have um, you know always precise frequency so here you see two stations and Morse code one here and one here I can click one and see what it says Another thing that you'll note is that when it's um, Morse code sent by a human, there are, are often spaces between uh, the, the words. Sometimes in a word you'll have letters that are spaced because of the lack of precision in the Morse code signal. So um, that's always something to check for.
So here, DE means from, and here is VE3JF. GF. So uh, that's another call letter, Canadian call letter. So, you know, it's not always easy uh, to decode, but it is worth it to try. And I think that by slowly decoding signals, you will have fun learning how to actually, uh, you know, and um, actually decode anything, decode text. Um, you know, lots of transmissions also are weather reports. Uh, you might find uh, a group of letters or numbers. These are a kind of number station, spy number stations in Morse code. And uh, of course, some cool conversations from different amateur radio stations. So I uh, hope that this tutorial for Morse code helps. And um, if you want to try something cool, why not tune W1AW? I'll put the link to the schedule in the uh, comments or the uh, description of the video. So if you want to see when and on what frequency they actually transmit uh, Morse code, it will be available there. So I uh, hope this series uh, is uh, going to be interesting for you. And uh, next we'll go, of course, to the real digital modes like uh, radio teletype, um, MFSK, BPSK, and uh, we'll try to decode as many types of signals as possible with FLDG. So thanks for watching and hope this series is fun for you.